So with that being said, this is our most powerful video to date, and it will also be the best day in all of history. Folks, you've got to, you absolutely have to stop believing Andrea Zabinski is some kind of prophet. Wait, why? That she hears from the Holy Spirit because she's gotten the rapture date wrong four, five, six times even. How do you get the rapture date wrong that many times and still think you hear from the Holy Spirit? And then how do you get on YouTube and tell everybody the rapture dates? And then when it doesn't happen, you say, oh, well, it's not a salvation issue for you to predict the rapture and it not happen. You do it in the name of the Holy Spirit. And you think nothing is wrong with that? <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to the Alabama Woodsman, where I am but one of many sheepdogs who hunt the evil most people pretend doesn't exist. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, I hope you can find something useful on my channel, and if you are a return viewer, you're obviously a glutton for punishment, and I appreciate that about you. Alright folks, as you know, um, Andrea Zabinski predicted the rapture for April 8th of 2024. This is just one of many rapture dates she has made public because the Holy Spirit tells her when the rapture dates are, except it didn't happen yet again. Folks, we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about Andrea Zabinski, and then I'm going to tell you when the rapture will happen. It's, it's not that difficult, okay? It's not some super secret esoteric knowledge that I have. We're just going to go to the written word of God. So let's look at these videos by Andrew Zabinski. Now, I'm going to get into the book of Revelation. And let me tell you up front, everybody listen. Hey, listen to me. I am not a Revelation expert, okay? And when I get into Revelation, I'm not telling you everything that's in there, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do it kind of more like an outline and just cut to the chase. Otherwise, this video will be three, four hours long. So here is Andrea Zabinski in her latest uh, fiasco of, of uh, predicting, prophesying the rapture in the name of the Holy Spirit. She puts this on the Holy Spirit. She's not saying, hey, I've done calculations and I think this is when it's going to happen. No, she tells her people the Holy Spirit is responsible for this rapture date, which is terrible hi everybody it's andrea shannon cheryl and sarah <laughs> i went backwards um i just wanted to uh say uh welcome back we've been gone for a couple of weeks um mostly due to the fact that we've had to put this uh very very serious presentation together uh as we know we've all been seeing all these videos uh even the apostate church is looking for for the rapture Folks, you ever notice how people in the apostate church don't know they are the ones in the apostate church? See, I used to think that when I read those scriptures for apostate church that it was just going to be people who just threw their hands up and said, you know what, I'm tired of all this Jesus stuff. I'm just going to live my life. He's not coming anytime soon. We've been told for thousands of years he's coming and he's not coming. I'm done with this. That's what I used to think the apostate church was. Now I believe it is the church led astray into false doctrine by people just like Andrea Zabinski. They don't hear from God, or if they do hear from God, it's deception. Because she's been wrong five or six times now on the rapture date. And the sad thing is, is you would think that she would get tired of being wrong, but she doesn't. She just, she just keeps getting more rapture dates. And then she tries to convince her people, oh, well, it's not a sin to predict the rapture. It's, it's, it's not really a, a, a salvation thing. Like, you can just lie in the name of Jesus and it not be a salvation thing. The fact that you can lie in the name of Jesus tells me there's a problem with your soul. 
Folks, I don't know if you know this about me, but anyone who's close to me will know this. I freak out. I have anxiety because I might say something wrong in one of these videos. I've taken videos down where I made a mistake and I took the whole video down. One of them had 4,700 views and I took it down because I could have been wrong in that video. I couldn't prove I was right and I couldn't prove my accuser is wrong. So I pulled the video. It was a Robin Bullock video. So, but, but, but uh, Zabinski does not. She has no conscience. She, her conscience is seared. Okay. It's nothing but scar tissue. There's no life there. All she's doing is saying, I heard, I heard, I heard. The Holy Spirit told me, the Holy Spirit told me. And it's always wrong. Um, but what we're going to be going through tonight is coming uh, literally from the Holy Spirit himself. All right, folks, she says that in every video, every every day she's gotten wrong on the rapture, like four or five or six times now, the Holy Spirit gave her that date. She tells you he did. So here's what's going on. If you look at these scriptures right here, um, you'll find out that God does do some deception. He he told Samuel to to it was OK to deceive Saul when Samuel went to. Uh, anoint David. He he used a lying spirit to coax Ahab out of hiding so he could die in battle. He also said that he would harden Pharaoh's heart. And then in Ezekiel, he says that if uh, the idolaters uh, ask one of his prophets, one of God's real prophets, uh, for something, and that they the real prophet does come to God, God himself said, I will deceive that prophet. So, folks, if the Holy Spirit really is telling her, he's making fool of her because he's telling her the wrong dates. Or she's really not hearing from the Holy Spirit. Whatever she's hearing from would be a familiar spirit or whatever, and it's meant to deceive her followers. Folks, you know where this all took a really big turn south? Is, is when people stopped depending on the written word of God as the absolute law in stone. And they started listening to the spoken word ministry. Anything in the spoken word ministry can, can be so uh, misleading or deceptive because it's men speaking it or familiar spirits speaking it. They could be soothsayers. God told you everything he wanted you to know in that book. And he says, if you will follow and serve him, you will receive the Holy Spirit and you will understand what's in that book. But folks, what's happened is people are tired. They're bored with the Bible. Jesus is no longer enough for them. They don't really hear from the Holy Spirit anymore. They've gone callous. They've gone apostate. And so what they do is they look for an emotional uh, experience. And that's what the spoken word ministry gives them. That's what it means when, when Timothy Dixon says, Oh, uh, if you need a healing, uh, go to Manuel Johnson's church. You'll get your healing. Well, that's not what the Bible says to do. The Bible says you go to your church elders and you get anointed with oil for your healings. It doesn't say you wait for the next Timothy Dixon uh, camp meeting in order to get your healing. Folks, people that follow the spoken word ministry, Jesus stopped being enough for them a long time ago. They don't hear anything from the Holy Spirit. And so they're looking for what they used to have when they were right with Jesus. And guess what? The devil gives them something so that they can feel like God's moving. They're tired of not getting the win in Jesus even though that's what the Bible said, you're going to be persecuted. It's not going to be fun and easy to be a Christian in these days. But they can't take it. They're scared. They don't want to hear what's in the real Word of God. So they listen to Timothy Dixon and these other people with their spoken word ministry. And they tell you up front, you can't hold God to just in the Bible. He's got to be able to speak to everyone to do what, Timothy? Give stuff in the Bible he didn't want to originally include, so you're going to make it up? 
You're going to tell God, God, I'm going to give this word because you're not doing it right, God. You should do it the way Timothy says to do it. Me, Lord, do it the way Timothy Dixon says to do it and everything will be fine because you don't know what you're doing. So I'm going to prophesy it into existence for you. That's what Timothy Dixon does when he prophesies. You see, folks, when people read the Bible and they don't like what it says, they will go to the spoken word ministry in a heartbeat because they tell you how great you are, how the world's going to all go to hell, but you're going to be fine. They tell you how you're going to get a wealth transfer when everybody else goes broke. And they lie to you and they lie to you and they lie to you and you eat it up like pigeon food like vomit on the sidewalk with a bunch of pigeons just pecking at it. And they don't even know what they're eating, but they know they like it. Folks, here's what Timothy Dixon says about the spoken word ministry. I am really troubled to say that, um, that we really think, do you really think that you can hold God in the pages of just the Bible? And a spoken word ministry. I saw spring forth out of the hearts of the men and women of God in this last day. Many churches shall begin to close, but there will be a rebound of churches, a new rebirth of new churches to open under a new thing, and the old shall pass away. Folks, the spoken word ministry we have in, on our planet today is not biblical. It is absolutely not biblical. That written word you have, you can bet your soul on that. But the spoken word ministry is easily a tool of manipulation. They can get you to give more money or to go here or say this or believe this. And it's all taken you off the one true path, the narrow path to the kingdom. And it's putting you on this big wide path. It takes you out of faith. As soon as you get into the spoken word ministry where God's going to jump through hoops and perform for you all the time, almost every day on Timothy Dixon's channel, Jesus is going to jump through like a little poodle dog through a hoop and please you with a word through Timothy Dixon. Folks, all that can be manipulated. The Antichrist is going to give his marching orders through his modern day prophets you're seeing right now that are getting a lot of support and money and, and fame. He is going to give them the marching orders and they are going to sit here and spew out things from the devil. And then these modern day apostles, they call themselves apostles who really aren't. They are the ones that are going to say, yes, the prophet has spoken. This is doctrine. God gave you all the doctrine he wanted you to have in that written word, and it's not good enough for you. When did it stop being enough for you? Folks, you're giving up everything when you put your faith in Timothy Dixon and Robin Bullock and Julie Green with her headline news prophecy. That's not even prophecy. That's soothsaying. That's witchcraft. She might as well be pulling out a tarot cards. Folks, do you know what you're giving up by believing this nonsense? You're thumbing your finger in God's face and telling him, your written word, God, is not enough for me. I got to jump in a car and go to a Timothy Dixon camp meeting just to feel like I've heard from you. And the whole time you take yourself out of faith and God says, if that's what you want, you can have it. And you go apostate and he watches you do it. He'll let you do it. Folks, we're seeing it all the time. The heretic hunters with discernment can spot it a mile away. But the people who are loving this, they just love that spoken word ministry. They can't see any of it. They think people like me are crazy. Well, you're just not a Christian. You just hate everything. You're a cessationist. All this nonsense. When Timothy Dixon prophesies against his own prophecies, he did that. He lied about Trump getting in office. He lied about Italy being destroyed. He's lied about so much. But yet people think he's a real prophet. You know why they think he's a real prophet? Because they want him to be a real prophet. So before we get started, I'm going to read something that I wanted to uh, 
just read to everybody because we're probably on our last two videos uh, to the end here. And um, I just wanted to at least um, uh, give you uh, the, the opportunity to hear, to hear me out on this. So folks, she uploaded this video March the 7th of 2024, weeks before the April 8th rapture eclipse was supposed to happen. She loaded it and it sat there and people believed it and believed her. She absolutely predicted the rapture for April 8th and it didn't happen. But yet she still has a following. I've been doing this for about three years. Um, and I know that uh, the three ladies that are on the channel, my true sisters in Christ, have been with me for over a year. And um, we've come a long way since last Passover season. And we're literally 32 days away from the rapture. This video is not for those that are not born again, as once we reveal what the Lord has revealed to us, you're not going to be able to deny this anymore. You people are not going to be able to deny this anymore. You, you, this video I'm making right here, once you see this video I'm making, we might have two more videos before the rapture, you won't be naysayers anymore, Andrea Zabinski says. Well, April 8th has come and gone, and Zabinski, we're still here. Because you don't know how to read the Bible. You are clueless on how to read the Bible. Now, you know how to hear something, and you know how to spew it out without verifying it, and you know how, what you think is the Holy Spirit lying to you about rapture dates. You're too silly to even see you've been lied to so many times. Why do you still hear that same voice and give it any credibility? Zabinski, you're not a prophet. You're not a dreamer of our God. You're a player in the apostasy of the church, and you don't even see it. And we'll most likely not deal with this very well, as 32 days really is not that long to rectify to one's failure to hearken unto the Lord's voice and serve the Lord as a servant and a prophet as he required to enter the kingdom. Folks, did she just say you have to be a prophet in order to go to heaven? And serve the Lord as a servant and a prophet as he required to enter the kingdom. Folks, I've only been a Christian for about 40 years. I don't know how long Andrea's been claiming Christianity. But I don't think I've ever read where you have to be a prophet in order to be accepted in God's kingdom. I don't think you're allowed to lie in the name of Jesus and lie on the Holy Spirit and get in. But she doesn't understand that. No, she says you have to be a prophet in order to go to heaven. While uh, we likely will be met with fear and terror and denial on this video, um, we're just going to give you this warning up front because we do know that uh, time is short. Now, folks, I purposefully waited till after like the 9th or 10th, you know, uh, of April to do this video. And, and it actually took a lot longer because I had some issues. I had some work issues. I had some health issues. And then um, I made this video like two or three times and totally trashed it. And I spent a week that I just threw away. Um, but I'm, I'm definitely not fear-mongering because we know the date came and went. And we saw from her own channel her prophecy uh, so there's no fear here. I'm not, I'm not acting in fear. I mean, I know that, uh, I, you know, around the 8th, I didn't have enough time to become a prophet so I could go to heaven, according to her. Uh, I'm still not a prophet, so I guess I'm not going to heaven, and you're not a prophet, so you're probably not going to heaven either if you listen to Andrea Zabinski. But folks, all this was was her hyping it up. She's her own hype man. And she's, she's trying to hook people into watching the video and believing her and, and all these things. Possibly even doing evil that good may come of it, which the Bible says you shouldn't do. Folks, she wants to sit here and tell you everything in her video about how much this has cost her. It has cost her everything. Andrea, lying in the name of Jesus will cost you everything. All right, look, folks, uh, we knew that the rapture wasn't coming on April 8th. Are you serious? 
let me show you when the rapture is coming, okay? Big news flash here. The Alabama woodsman is going to tell you when the rapture happens, all right? You got to follow this. Andrea, get your little notepad out. Copy some notes, all right? And then take it to the Lord in prayer and verify it. On one hand, it'll be the most terrible day for those that did not hearken unto the Lord's voice for correction and sanctification, as well as to learn from him directly, guiding his true prophets in these last four years specifically to the end. Now, some of you have been following Andrea longer than I have, so you know more about her than I do. Um, but this is about like the fifth or sixth rapture date she's gotten. And she's, of course, never gotten it right. But instead of being wrong like five or six times or four or five times or what the actual number is, you, if you guys know, you can put it down in the comments. Instead of saying, hey, look, I've predicted the rapture like four or five or six times now, and I've gotten it wrong every time. You know what I think might be going on? The voice that's telling me the rapture dates doesn't know what they're talking about. That never dawns on her. Now, see, she'll turn this video off because she says, well, the woodsman doesn't speak in love, so he can't teach me anything. I don't, I don't have to listen to him because he doesn't, he doesn't speak in love. Well, you can do that with anything, okay? I can say that Andrea Zabinski doesn't speak in love because she lies to everyone. She can't even read a Bible verse without bastardizing it and making it say what she wants it to say. Folks, you've got to. You absolutely have have to stop believing Andrea Zabinski is some kind of prophet. Wait, why? That she hears from the Holy Spirit because she's gotten the rapture date wrong four, five, six times even. How do you get the rapture date wrong that many times and still think you hear from the Holy Spirit? And then how do you get on YouTube and tell everybody the rapture dates? And then when it doesn't happen, you say, oh, well, it's not a salvation issue for you to predict the rapture and it not happen. You do it in the name of the Holy Spirit. And you think nothing is wrong with that? The amount of loss it created uh, to speak the truth uh, for the four of us uh, through these spoken words, through these spoken words, through these spoken words and a spoken word ministry I saw spring forth out of the hearts of the men and women of God in this last day. In this last year, warning everybody that we possibly could to only be rejected even out of love on our part is because they too did not believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12. So 32 days before April 8th, where she thought the rapture was coming, she prophesied the rapture was coming. If you didn't believe her before April 8th, well, you just don't believe the gifts of the Holy Spirit. She uses the Bible against your sound doctrine. Folks, I'm going to show you when the rapture is going to happen. She is clueless to the book of Revelation. I'm going to show it to you as plain as I possibly can, Andrea. Listen to what someone else has to say other than that voice you think is the Holy Spirit for a change. This loss has been immense, but when you serve a holy God, you will not compromise your soul for anything. Folks, I want to introduce you to Andrea Zabinski. I want to introduce you to a victim of God. She just makes herself out to be a victim of God. Andrea. Let me speak this to you in love, okay? The reason you say you've lost loved ones and dear friends and that this has cost you dearly is because they see how delusional you are, but yet you don't listen to them. So because they are naysayers in your eyes, you push them away. That's why you don't have the friends and the loved ones you used to. You actually left them. They're on the narrow path the Lord talks about, and you've jumped on the wide NAR, anything goes in church path, and that's where you are, and you're looking back at your loved ones saying, I'm sorry, when you're a true prophet, you won't compromise anything for the Lord. Really? 
you lie in the name of the Holy Spirit and you think you're not compromising anything? That's how delusional you are, Andrea. So with that being said, this is our most powerful video to date, and it will also be the best day in all of history to be going to the marriage supper of the Lamb to serve our Father Jesus Christ for eternity. Except, Andrea, it didn't happen. We are not at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Like you prophesied, April 8th, we should all be at the marriage supper of the Lamb. I mean, now, when you say April 8th, do you mean that like when Australia gets April 8th? Or when the last country on the time zone gets to April 8th. When is the real rapture? When is the real time of the rapture, Andrea? You don't know. It's obvious you don't know because you've mispredicted five, six times now. Folks, we know the rapture wasn't going to happen on April 8th. But she doesn't. And if you came against her, you didn't do it in love and you didn't believe in the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit, it's all your fault. But that's okay, because you know what she does? She goes into damage control immediately. She will tell her people, as she's done in the past, that, that lying in the name of the Holy Spirit about the rapture date is not a salvation issue. And, and, and okay, now we know that that wasn't the rapture date, but that was a special time marker. She said that in other videos. In hindsight, she sees that it's not the rapture, even though she promised you it was before. So she calls it a time marker, and she justifies it that way. She will not see that she's a liar in the name of the Holy Spirit. This one is going to prove once and for all that the Lord is taking his true prophets home on April 8th. Oh, I'm sorry, Andrea. Not this time. But I'm sure you'll get another rapture date. So April 8th is the rapture, and it is the door to the New Jerusalem as we unlock the end to a second coming. Anything you'd like to add to that? How about new, you crazy? It's really good. It sums it up really well. Um, It's been a long, well, three and a half years. We did know that the Mark of the Beast was here. All right, folks. They they think that the Mark of the Beast was, was when the <coughs> happened. And everybody started to put things into their body or have a nurse practitioner put something in their body. They think that was the mark of the beast. That's how little these four women know about the Bible. I keep telling you, they don't know the first thing about the written word of God. Because their mind is mush with the spoken word ministry. Yeah, you thought I was going to play Timothy Dixon there again, didn't you? But I'm not going to do it. They All they care about is what they think they hear. And let's get on YouTube and get some followers and get some people to believe us that we are prophets. And if you're not a prophet, you can't go to the kingdom of God. You got to be a prophet. These are the people that don't know enough Bible to know the, uh, what you call it, was not the mark of the beast. Let me tell you how you know it's not the mark of the beast. Number one, in order for it to be the mark of the beast, the beast has to be here. Now, well, you could debate whether the beast is being created or gaining power, but the beast is not in power yet. The mark of the beast is a sign of worship. The <coughs> was not a sign of worship. Because there's nothing to worship right now as far as the beast is concerned. So this <laughs> being the mark of the beast is a lie. The other thing is, it says it's supposed to leave a mark on your hand or your forehead. Well, if you get something right here, all right, why did it not leave a mark on your hand or your forehead? That's what the mark of the beast will do. I mean, it, the Bible is clear. You either need the name of the beast or the number of the beast or his mark. Any one of those three or combination of those three, and you're in trouble. But when you, when you took this, how come you don't have a mark on your forehead or your hand like the Bible says you will? Here's another thing. Andrea, I am sure you and your three little minion there did not take the, 
You didn't, you didn't take the mark of the beast, what you call the mark of the beast. Well, how is it that you can still buy and sell freely? Because the mark of the beast, if you don't take the mark of the beast, you can't buy and sell freely. How is it you're still doing it if it was the mark of the beast? That's how little Bible you don't know, Andrea Zabinski. And those are perfectly clear words. You should know that much. But no, your mind made of mush on spoken word ministry heard that it was, so you puked it out to your people and on YouTube, bringing condemnation on people that do not deserve condemnation because it was not the mark of the beast. Now, the mark of the beast is being developed, and I'm, I'm leaning towards uh, Bill Gates' uh, insertable uh, technology. I think that is the market beast. That's the beginning of it. I think we're, it's, it's, it's a progress. It's an evolution. But Andrea's going to tell you that that's the mark of the beast. Shows you how much Bible she doesn't know. All right, folks, look, uh, let's cut to the chase. Let me tell you when the rapture is going to happen, and we'll wrap this video up. Now, the first way that you can learn when the rapture is going to take place is to, first of all, put away the spoken word ministry. Put away these liars who say they've heard from Jesus when it's going to happen. Put people away like Zabinski who says the Holy Spirit has told her four, five, six different times when the rapture is going to happen, and it never does. Put that nonsense away. Then I want you to get your Bible. I want you to turn to Revelation 6. Let's start with 1 and 2. This is the white uh, this is the first seal, the white horse rider. He's given a crown. He has a bow. There's no mention of arrows. And I heard a preacher preach on the fact that there's no arrows. And uh, I, I don't even remember what he said. I just remember he preached on it. Now, the white horse rider conquers and goes out to conquer. So there is some authority and some power with the white horse rider. Now, folks, people will tell you this is the 12th imam. Which, you know, I can understand why they say that. They'd also say this is the Antichrist. I could see why they would say that. Um, but then there's a lot of people that says this is Jesus Christ. So um, you may need to want to do some studying on that and see, see what, uh, where, where it falls. Then there's the second seal. The second seal is the red horse. That's Revelation uh, 6, 3 through 4. Has power to take peace from the earth. Uh, people will kill one another has gr has a great sword now we've always had people killing one another but i think when the red horse uh arrives in our history it will be accelerated there'll be a lot more of it okay some people say that we're just now getting into the riding of the red horse and i don't dispute that but i think it's going to get so much worse Wait till the wait till America defaults, and then you'll see the red horse riding. I'll, I'll bet you. Then in Revelation six, uh, verse five and six, this is the third seal, the black horse rider, and the black horse rider brings famine and uh, high inflation. And regardless of what anyone has told you, the black horse rider is not the one true prophet, okay? There's nothing in the Bible that says the black horse rider is a prophet. That brings us to the fourth seal, the pale horse rider. This is Revelation 6, verses 7 through 8. His name is Death, and Hades, we would say is hell or the grave, follows. He has a power over one quarter of the earth, now, I'm going to call that as population and geography. That may be a stretch, I don't know. But we definitely know he has a quarter power, um, a quarter of the earth under his power. He kills with hunger, with the sword, and with deaths, and, and with wild beasts. Now, when I looked up the term beast, okay, it, it says something about there being venomous, all right? So normally when you think of venomous, you think of snakes and scorpions and spiders and all that. Most scorpions don't kill you. They just, they just hurt real bad. Um, like a like a wasp sting, but uh, for some reason, this pale horse rider can manipulate animals to kill man. So I thought that was pretty interesting. 
Now, when the fifth seal comes, these this is the martyrs under the altar, Revelation 6, verses 9 through 11. These are the people who were killed for the word of God and their testimony. They cry vengeance for their blood because they, they've been martyred and they, they have the right to expect vengeance on their murders. They, uh, they were given white robes and told to rest a while until their martyred brethren arrive. Folks, it's going to get very, very difficult. Now, in the sixth seal, there is a lot of things going on. There's a great earthquake when the sixth seal is open, okay? This is, this is uh, titled Cosmic Disturbances in my Bible. It's Revelation 6, 12 through 17, and then chapter 8 through 7, uh, through chapter 8, 17, if it's what my notes say, if they're correct. Uh, there's a great earthquake, all right? Now, this is not just going to be any earthquake. This is a great earthquake. Um, I don't think we've seen an earthquake quite like this yet. The sun turns black, sackcloth. The moon becomes as blood. Now, that's not to say it's a blood moon. The moon becomes as blood. Stars of heaven fall to earth, okay? Meteor shower, whatever you want to call it. That's going to do a lot of damage. The sky rolls up like a scroll. Now, this could be um, like I've seen some nuclear explosions, especially like out in the ocean when they blow it up and the, the clouds just recede back, okay? That could be... Uh, what this is is referring to. Mountains and islands are moved from their place. Folks, mountains and islands moved from their place. That is a massive shaking. Men hide in caves and rocks. They cry out for the rocks to hide them from the wrath of God and the wrath of the Lamb. Notice the wrath of God and the wrath of the Lamb. Interesting there. Because, because judgment has come. It's judgment time. Now, it, the sixth seal in Revelation 7 starts talking about the angels that hold back the wind. The four angels hold back the wind so that it blows not on the earth or the sea nor on any tree. Hey, folks, can you imagine the earth without wind? Now, we don't think about it because wind, you know, is a natural occurrence to us. But without wind, odors and, and uh, gases and things like that will settle down on the earth. And, and it'll just, it'll be terrible. Without that wind to bring fresh air and whisk away these different odors, these dangerous uh, fumes, um, it's going to take its toll on man. They are told not to hurt the earth until the servants of God are sealed. All right, now for the seventh seal, there's seven angels and they have trumpets and they stand before God. And then there's this other angel that's given a, a, a censer. All right, looks like this right here. And in that are put incense. Now, what this angel does is offers the incense mixed with the prayers of the people. And it comes up. As, as an aroma towards God and his throne. The censer is filled with the altar fire, and then the angel casts it up, uh, down to earth. Um, then there's heard voices and thunderings and lightnings, and, and then there's another earthquake. The seven trumpets held by these seven angels are about to sound. So the first trumpet blown by the first angel we see in Revelation 8, 7 is basically the destruction of vegetation. Now, a third of the trees are going to be burned up with, um, with, with fire mixed with blood. And then all the green grass is going to be burned up. Now, think about when famine hits. If all the green grass is gone and a third of the trees, how much more is that going to compound the problem to fa with famine? But what if we see the dark horse, uh, the, the black horse rider riding, which is the third seal, and the first trumpet are kind of the same thing, just a little different. Okay, this would this is what would be called parenthetical or like in a parentheses. So as the first see, uh, I'm sorry, as the third seal is being broken, and and the and the black horse rider is coming. Also, the first trumpet is blowing. So it doesn't run one through seven seals and then 
it goes at once you get to the seventh seal it goes one through seven trumpets and then after those things blow one through seven bowls or vials they they overlap to put it into a, a, a you know an easier term they overlap and they run together at the same time. That's why this is so hard to explain. I've made this video. This will be the fourth time I've made this video because it's so hard to explain. Folks, there's more. Now, when the second trumpet sounds by the second angel, basically it uh, this poisons the seawater. This is Revelation 8, 8 through 9. A great mountain burning with fire as a fire is cast into the sea and a third part of the sea becomes blood. Folks, the death that's going to happen in the sea also is going to affect the food chain and a lot of other things. Now, when the third trumpet sounds, stars fall from heaven. There's a great star, and, and it's famous in, in the Bible, called Wormwood. They call it Wormwood. And it falls from the heaven as a torch. It means it's on fire. It's blazing. It falls upon one third part of the rivers and the springs so earlier we saw the uh the salt water the sea a third of it turned to blood which means it's not usable it, it kills everything it touches now we see a third of the rivers and springs which is fresh water that is now undrinkable it's poisoned and a third of the fresh water is now not usable and many men die so that brings us to the fourth trumpet now, when the angel blows the fourth trumpet, the, the sun is smitten and angels cry out, woe to the earth. Okay. Um, these are called like the woes, three woes. All right. We're talking Revelation 8, 12 through 13. When this happens, when the fourth trumpet is blown, a third part of the sun is smitten. A third part of the stars are darkened. A third part of the day goes dark. Okay, And the angel cries three times, woe, because of the three remaining trumpets, which means they're going to get even worse than what we've seen. Now imagine, if you will, what could cause the sun to be smitten, the stars to be darkened, and a third of the day to go dark. Well, depending on what's going on, smoke and dust in the atmosphere could cause all of that. Um, folks, there's a spiritual side of things, and then there's the physical. I have no doubt that in uh, during the Exodus story with the frogs and the hail and, and, and all this, and the, and the blood turn, uh, water turning to blood and all these different things, that God used a physical thing to make them happen once he spiritually decreed it to happen. Um, so I, I think, I've always thought that. Some people say, uh, that before something happens in the physical, it happens in the spiritual first. Okay, well, whatever. Um, but in, in this case, I really do believe that. I believe there's going to be a physical reason why uh, a third part of the earth doesn't get sun. Okay, um, now if, 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 if you're a flat earther and the earth is spinning or the earth is still and the sun is spinning, or if you're a global earther and, and the and the the globe is turning and all that, then it could just be. Now, one other thing is the way I read the book of Revelation is this is not, this is, this is going on in Israel. It's affecting everywhere, but the main focus is Israel in the book of Revelation. It's all about Israel. So when it talks about a third part of the day goes dark, it could just be a third part of Israel's day goes dark. We're not really told, but I kind of lean that way. You don't have to. So something is going on that is starting to now affect the sun, affect the, uh, at night. Okay. The, the, the cloud or whatever it is could, could, uh, block the, the light from the stars. Um, and the third part of the day and the angel crying, whoa, 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 to the inhabitants of the earth is, is saying, look, it's about to get really, really serious with these last three trumpets. All right, folks, now we have the fifth trumpet, okay, um, <clears throat> which is the first woe. This is the opening of the bottomless pit, which is Revelation 9, 1 through 12. Uh, a star or an angel falls from heaven to earth with the key to the bottomless pit. He opens the pit, smoke rises, and uh, uh, it darkens the sun. 
Out of the smoke come locusts, given power like uh, scorpions have. The locusts are commanded not to hurt the vegetation. They're only there to hurt people. They are to hurt men without the seal of God. Now, back in the sixth seal, there's a lot of things I didn't mention that are going on. But one of the things I didn't mention was there's this angel who comes from the east when the, when the four angels are holding back the, the wind. There's another angel that comes and seals the 144,000. So this is the seal we're talking about. They torture men for five months and kill no one, but they're only torturing those without the seal of God. Everyone else gets tortured by these. Now they torture men so much that men desire to die. They just want it to be over with this. They want to die, but death doesn't come to them. They won't die. They are made to take the, the uh, torturous judgment of God. This is uh, the first woe. All right, now when the sixth trumpet blows by the sixth angel, this is bringing in the second woe. Um, there's going to be a lot of things coming on, and, and, and I'm going to read from my notes just so I can keep it all in order <clears throat> and make sure that I get everything. So when the, when the uh, sixth trumpet blows, the second woe is here, a voice from the horned altar before God speaks up. And it tells the sixth angel to loose the four uh, angels from the river Euphrates. These angels were prepared for one year, one month, one day, and one hour to kill one third of mankind. Now, the Bible talks about what these horses look like and the riders look like, and I'm not going to get into all that because it's a, it's a lot of stuff, okay? Um, but the remaining men, the men that, that are still alive at this point, would not repent of their idol worship. They would not repent of their sorceries. They would not repent of their murders. They're still not repenting. Okay, now I'm going to read from my notes because I want to get through this, you know, fast. Um, so in the in the sixth trumpet, uh, there's an angel with a rainbow on upon his head. His face is the sun, and his feet are like fire. Uh, the, this angel places one foot in the sea and one foot on the earth. He has a little book and he cries out like a lion and seven thunders are heard. The thunders uh, utter voices. So there's voices in the thunders. Um, and what is said is not documented for man to know at this time. Uh, angels swear by God that the time is to be no more and the mystery of God should be finished. John eats the little book. Um, he measures the temple. The, the two witnesses have arrived. Only after they've completed their testimony will the beast from the bottomless pit overcome them. They lay dead in the street for three days and the world celebrates. Then a great voice of heaven says, come up hither. Folks, now, look, you don't have to believe this you don't, at all. But I think when God calls the, uh, the two witnesses up and says, come up hither, I think that's the point of the rapture for everyone who's going to go in the rapture because we don't see anything else like this after this point. Remember, these, these, uh, th some of this stuff runs parenthetical. Now, remember, we are not subject to wrath as children of God. Um, but that's, I think, at that point when, when, when they are called up, everyone is called up. You don't have to believe that if you don't want to. There was a great earthquake, and a tenth of the city fell. Now, it says a tenth of the city, not cities. Tenth of the city. Another reason why I think this is Israel. This is Jerusalem, in my opinion. You don't have to believe that. Do your own research. It doesn't bother me. Uh, let's see. A tenth of the city falls, and 7,000 men are killed. The remnant glorify God, and the second woe has passed. Now, I went through that quick, but you need to, to realize something that I said. At that point, the remnant glorify God. So in this sixth trumpet, the remnant is still on earth. You, you need to catch that, okay? Like I said, when, 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 when the, the two witnesses are pulled up, I think we're pulled up as well. Folks, we're at the seventh trumpet. And something that I really want you to understand is we've not seen 
we've not seen the wrath of God poured out yet. Okay, so all the first seals, all the first trumpets are not the wrath of God. It's just tribulation. Now is about to come great tribulation. All right, folks, so the seventh trumpet and the third woe, we're wrapping this up. When the seventh trumpet sounds, great voices in heaven are saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. The 24 elders are there, and they fall, and they worship God. They, they, they fall to their face, their faces down, and they worship God. The, the temple in heaven is opened, and the ark of, of uh, his testament is seen. All right, that's, some, that's something that, that uh, you know, I really want to understand, the ark of his testament. Um, and then the last thing is, there were lightnings and voices and thunders and earthquakes and great hail. Now, that is the seventh trumpet and the last woe. Let's look at a couple things before we wrap this up. All right, folks, so up until this point, um, we've not seen a whole lot of mention about God's wrath. We did see the God's wrath and the Lamb's wrath. Now, remember, some people say this runs parenthetically, so you don't have to believe any of it. Folks, if anyone tells you, okay, if, if one true prophet arises on the earth, and says they understand every mystery in the book of Revelation, they are lying to you, okay? That's why it's called a mystery. There's things in there that God doesn't want us to know, and there's things in there that we won't know until after it happens. All right, folks, I want you to go to Revelation 15, verse 7. This is the New King James. Then one of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven golden bowls full of the wrath of God who lives forever and ever. Now, when the bowl judgment comes, this is the wrath of God. We've not seen the wrath of God in the seals and the trumpets, but now the bowls are about to be poured out. This is how it's, it's laid out as far as I can see. So you can see we have the seven seals. Now, I personally believe we are just starting the second seal, which is the red horse, which is peace being taken from the earth. I think that death, man killing man, is going to accelerate. And when America defaults in the first week, when the shelves are emptied, folks, you're going to see the red horse riding. That's my personal beliefs. If you don't want to believe it, it doesn't make a difference to me. Find out for yourself. But we are, I think, in the, the second seal. So we still have three, four, five, six, and seven to go. Now, over here, we have the seven trumpets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, like I said, these overlap, okay? This is the way I believe. You don't have to believe this if you don't want to. I believe the trumpets and the seals do overlap. Now, the people who study the book of Revelation will tell you that the, the trumpets and the seals and the bowls are parenthetical. They run into each other. They overlap each other. Now, I believe that. I believe it's just a little bit different, So, and, and you don't have to believe the way I believe. I believe that the, the seals and the trumpets are parenthetical. They'll, they'll, they'll match up, okay? But it's not one-to-one. -one. So you get the first seal, and then the first trumpet blows. That's not how it works. I think, I think the first trumpet actually pops up somewhere around the third seal, okay? Um, but but I'm, I'm really not, you know, I've just seen some talk on that, and, and I'm just learning that stuff. But what we've not seen is anything labeled the wrath of God yet. Now, we see in uh, the seventh seal, okay, that the, the angels with the wrath of God in their bowls, they are about to pour out. So what I think, all right, and like I said, you don't have to believe this, is the seals and the trumpets are parenthetical. They're mixed up. Somehow they, they arrange. But it's just me now. You don't have to believe this. I know there's a lot of people don't believe this. I believe the bowls come in after the seventh trumpet. I don't believe they're poured out before because we're still here. Okay? The remnant are still here. Now, we're going to look at one verse, okay, that tells you when the rapture will come. Actually, there's going to be two verses. 
So I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're going to start at verse 51. And it reads like this in the New King James. Behold, I tell you a mystery. Folks, this is a mystery, all right? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Folks, those verses right there tell you the rapture happens at trump number seven. It can't happen on April 8th because at best we are only in the second seal. The red horse is riding now. So all this other stuff, the three, four, five, six, and seven seals, the one, two, three, four, five, six uh, trumpets, those have not happened yet. Now, if you say parenthetically, some of them have happened, that's fine. But we are not at trumpet number seven. Trumpet number seven did not sound at, on April 8th, Andrea Zabinski. You need to read the Bible and put away whatever voice you think is the Holy Spirit because that is lying to you. It's making biblical fool of you. It is showing that you put the spoken word ministry above the written word ministry, and that is wrong. Folks, don't believe anyone who tells you the rapture is coming tomorrow until we have experienced all the seals and all the trumpets. Now, I believe on the seventh trumpet, then the angel begins to pour out the wrath of God out of the bowls. You don't have to believe that. There's some people believe that the way this parenthetically lines up is they all line up and then all the, the, the seventh seal, the seventh trumpet, and the seventh bowl all line up in the timeline. I don't believe that. If that were to happen, though, what would have to happen is God would have to supernaturally protect us from all the bowls. Okay? But I already told you when I believe the rapture happens. After come up hither... I think the bowls are, are, are poured out on the earth. Folks, you're going to get people like Andrea Zabinski to make these videos to fulfill whatever desire they have. Whatever need they have, they will get from you if you'll like and share that video. But there is no way the rapture is just tomorrow, okay? Now, I'm making this video in April of 2024, mid-April 2024. So if you see this in 30 years, that may be different. And I'm not saying the rapture is 30 years away. I'm just saying it's not tomorrow. Bo Polney, you, you are such a liar. You said that on uh, June 25th of 2023, evil would be removed from the earth and didn't even think that in order for evil to be removed from the earth, evil people would have to be removed from the earth. You didn't think about that. And you're a liar. So anytime you talk about the rapture happening in the next week or two or because the Maseroth says this or the stars line up that way and all that stuff, you're lying. We have to experience the seals and the trumpets. Folks, I hope, um, and like I said, I am not an expert on Revelation, but I hope I was able to show you when the rapture happens. Now, on our timeline, I don't know the date of that. I don't know how that's going to unfold. But I do believe we are in the second seal. I believe it's just getting started. I believe the horse is, is right now at a walk. And when he's running full blast, I personally think that's when America defaults because it's going to shake the whole world when America defaults. I'm not somebody who believes that the book of Revelation is about America. It's about Israel and the Jews. That's what that's about. But I believe the red horse, as the red horse rides, it's going to affect us. And I just kind of believe that. I could be totally wrong. Folks, um, look, that's the video. Let, let's pray for Andrea and her three friends. Um, I've, I've been talking with, I'll just say, someone who's very close to one of those four or to, to those people. And uh, they're heartbroken. They are They are heartbroken because... Um, they have pushed away people and they think that they are on the right path. And if it's, if it's not their way, it's the highway and they cut you loose. 
And that, that's a tragedy. That's, that's just a shame. But it shows you how strong their delusion is. Folks, that's a video. Now, I always want to leave you with the, the truest of true prophecies. The truest of true prophets, Timothy Dixon, when he speaks the crystal clear words of Jesus Christ through his vocal cords and out his mouth, you can't deny this is the Lord because it's so crystal clear when he says, let not, Satan, let, not, let not Satan deceive you. Let not Satan deceive you. Let not Satan deceive you. When the prophets speak, it's perfection in the choice of words.